When it comes to the longevity of any vehicle, having access to capable after-sales services is critical in enabling each vehicle to go the extra mile. That's why we're here today at the Gobel Engineering Multi-Story Heavy Duty Workshop to find out what those capabilities are and how they all integrate together. And in a space that's as large as three football fields spread across three floors, one can only expect a high capacity for service. And the hard-working men and women at this facility gets about 4,000 inquiries every month for a diversity of vehicles to be serviced and ready for the road ahead. Giving me a tour of this facility is Cheong, who is the general manager of after sales in Gobel Engineering. With 12 years of experience under his belt, I'm eager to ask him a couple of questions. What went into designing this entire facility in the first place? I think to build this place, actually, or to design for this place, we almost took about three years. Looking at this facility itself, it is not just talking about one purpose. I think there are many functional roles in this building itself. One of the key uh, inputs really coming from the customer. What do they want? And uh, of course, that we have to look at also the technology advancement. I think not forgetting that how can we make this place very efficient and is top class among all the uh, facilities that probably have seen in Singapore or even in the world. And you take a lot of pride in that, I'm sure. Certainly. We take care of the full range of the commercial vehicle, right from a small commercial van to buses or even heavy duty trucks. Sometimes we do face problems with the vehicle itself that some uh, issues that are brought up by the drivers, it might not be made known to us so easily. And uh, we have to make use of those, those equipments to allow us to be able to identify the real problems because most of these might not even have a telltale sign. So our diagnostic equipment could actually fish out all the error codes. Certainly, if there's anything more than what was being told by the owner, we have to update the owner to get their consensus, to get the jobs going. So could you tell me a bit about how your workforce has been trained in order to uh, work with the machinery for the customers? We have the group of uh, well-trained technicians. They undergo training by our in-house trainer and has actually received uh, direct training from the principal in the whole spectrum of works that required to be undertaken in this uh, workshop itself. But that is not good enough. Like oh? you may, you're asking the question, how can the machine and human interface? Being just skillful is not good enough because the technology has caught up so much that you can't just base on experience to get things done. So what is most important that how can you make use of all the sophisticated and intelligent equipment to allow you to be able to identify the problems on the vehicle and able to troubleshoot at the end of the day given a cost of uh, remedy actions to rectify the vehicles. Now, innovation can come in many forms when overcoming challenges. Chong showed me a key highlight of the workshop floor that enables them to achieve a 95% parts fulfillment rate, a crucial statistic I'm told, but it is key in reducing service turnaround time. So, could you tell me a bit about uh, this place that we're currently in? This is actually a parts uh, warehouse. This warehouse will serve the maintenance activities in the shop floor that you have seen just now. Each vehicle are constructed using different parts. So there are lots of parts are required to be made available at all times so that the vehicles will have the shortest repair lead time as possible and not waiting for the parts. And we have technology to help them to achieve the efficiencies that we would want to ultimately to pass on to the customer. You will press the button, the particular parts will come down to you to the level where you can pick it up. So all these are automated. It is a systematically designed space here. Ultimately, it derives a lower cost for the customer in the maintenance activities. So if that's the case, is that a philosophy that also lends itself to the oil dispensing system that we saw a while back? Why does that need the innovation? I, I would say that one uh, is to help the technicians who actually are servicing a vehicle such that he doesn't really need to carry the pail of uh, oil from a central location to his place to get it filled up. So with the system, with the input of the job itself, he could just fill it up accurately with the amount that already preset into the system itself. So in this case, basically empowering your workforce uh, in a way that is reasonable but as well as to keep them safe but to also increase efficiency. Yes. Next, Chong brought me up to another level where a different kind of work is taking place. If the workshop floor at level 1 is a general clinic for vehicles, then this level is for specialised intensive care. 
I wonder what warrants a visit to this level. Now, one of the things I've seen here is that some of these vehicles seem to require intensive care. It doesn't seem like they were brought here all by themselves. How did they come to a facility like this? For example, I think what we're talking about like accident repairs, right? So frankly speaking, the accident vehicles for occur on the road itself. So we actually have 24-7 emergency team that will be operating throughout the whole islands. So when customers have a distress call in the event of any accident repair or any emergency they need our team to attend to, we do send our team out to the field to have it attend to the customer. We try to recover as much as we could over there. And uh, unfortunately, some of the repair could be beyond what the capabilities of the team. So of that nature, they will have to pull it back to the workshop here. We are at the Body Works area right now, but you have also brought me to see the spray booth. I'm trying to understand why all these things are within one space. Certainly, I mean the vehicles after accidents uh, occurrence, so it has to be panel bit and form into the shape. That means all the dented parts have to be straightened. So after that, certainly a paintwork has been damaged. So in the context of the uh, process itself, spray booth is a must to be able to put the vehicles back to the original colors and uh, with a nice coat of paint. So that is actually a complementary um, activities in this part of body repairs. And that's not the only activity that's complementary. Housed in this massive fifth floor is an entire section dedicated to a process that I've come to learn to be component remanufacturing. I'll let Cheong explain more. Uh, re reman you mean remanufacturing. So um, we are trying to actually recover a component so that you'll be ready and in a cost-effective manner for the customers when the components needed to fix the vehicle. So that sounds a lot to me like repair. Uh, aren't, aren't they like the same thing? No, component remain actually has uh, to follow a certain streamline process. You will try to iron out every single uh, wear and tear and defective parts within the component. But a repair is only zoom into a particular items which you found obviously or visibly possible to replace the item or repair that particular items. So certainly the component remand will allow the component to last for even longer period of time. So it's almost like a, like a whole structural integrity check and refurbishing of that, which then also begs the question because from what you said, it feels like it takes a much longer time to remand something compared to repair. If that's the case, then why not just consider replacing it? Of course, certainly, uh, replace is always the best to do, but the question is very costly for the customer. So we offer alternatives in this case. Of course, in the remand process itself, we also build in a lot of technologies and use methods to actually to improve the repair uh, process itself, such that we can keep the cost down. Mm. So speaking of that, one of the things that uh, I was interested uh, when you were giving me the tour were just some of the specialized equipment, especially let's say in the engine assembly room. There were these machines, what are they and like how did that come about? That's actually an assembly jig itself for the engine. So the jigs are able to actually to move to a certain positions where it's the best for the technicians to be able to carry out the installation work. So we actually designed that purposely is to improve the efficiency of the technicians such that we could actually bring the whole engine over whole process down to a 10 days. Is there any other machinery or technologies that have also had this customized treatment in order to make a remand process a lot more efficient? So of course, that we also have looked at other part of the process itself, which I think you have also seen some of them early on. One of them is actually the parts washer. So the parts washer also a customized uh, equipment that we built for this washing process such that you can actually perform it even faster than the manual process. The reductions of uh, saving in terms of man hours is almost like 60%. So if I'm following you correctly, it means that by focusing so much on the uh, just the innovations and the systematic thinking of the processes in place, uh, you have made Reman into a viable choice, especially compared to repair, but ultimately all of these are the various alternatives that the customer can choose. Why offer these plethora of choices? I think because we say that the component wanted to last possibly yeah. over the lifespan of the truck as I much see. as we could. So if having a, a brand new part, certainly it could last as long as what we think it should, right? But using a component remand, certainly there will be a certain trade-off in terms of the lifespan, but the cost is much lower. So when the truck is new, we prefer to use a replacement. 
So when it's at midline, maybe you should consider a revenge. But if your truck is coming to the end of the life, I think you just probably use a repair. Just to be specific on the areas that you just want to get it done and let the truck roll off. By the time the components probably worn out and your truck is ready to be scrapped through. So basically, simply put, it is different solutions for different situations. Yes. Just before we end the tour, Chong showed me a rest stop within the building itself where customers can come and relax while services were underway. Aptly named the driver's hub, this comfortable hideout has a pool table, beverages and entertainment options for one to enjoy on comfy chairs. And there seems to be no better place than here to conclude our tour. So we just came down from level 5 and I've been eager to ask you on why all these different facilities were placed together in such close proximity? I think our planning mindset is really that uh, we hope that we could actually provide a one-stop service solution within this building. So customers don't actually need to travel to multiple points and to reduce their time spent as well as whatever the cost they may incur. So which means that for you, when it comes to the caring for customers, that naturally equates to caring about how uh, your cost is being factored in and how to minimize it in a way that doesn't uh, negatively impede on reliability or efficiency. Yeah. Is that then why you have all these various programs? So one of the programs that we run is actually a three R's program. So three R's actually stand for reduce, reuse and remand. So the thing is that uh, using this three R's program, we actually have achieved a 30% reduction in terms of the cost savings for the customer as well as the downtime for the vehicles in repair. Every customer has their different operational needs and every vehicle has different life to have been used for up to certain years. So I think everyone will have a different choices of in terms of what are the programs that's most suitable for them. So that means really I think from what you've been telling me is that a lot of these things have started to uh, give dividends in terms of your planning of three years and having these kinds of long-term objectives. So if that's the case, then what are you excited about the future prospects of this facility? I think for instance, I think what is actually realized is actually the electric vehicle charging. We have actually uh, invested in this uh, premises with the capabilities to be able to support the electric vehicle. So going forward, there will be electric vehicles maintenance work going on as well but we want to do more. I think we want to continue to solicit for information feedback coming from customers so that we can even enhance the level of uh, works that we could do here by providing an even better service to our customers. And I'm sure that if you succeed, they succeed. Exactly. I want to thank you so much for bringing me on this tour and also sharing your knowledge on what those capabilities are and how they all integrate together. How could other people get to learn and experience what you have shared with me today? I think the best things for the customers is really to experience myself coming, by coming down to here with all the service solutions that actually I speak available for them. So I think the other ways of looking at it is that our website actually contains a lot of information about what we are offering in the form of service solutions and other forms of products. So please visit our website.